banana is one of the most important food crops after maize, rice, wheat and cassava. World annual production is estimated at about 130 million tonnes. One third of it is grown in sub-Saharan Africa, where the crop provides more than 25% of the food energy requirements for over 100 million people. East Africa, including Burundi, Kenya, Rwanda, Tanzania and Uganda, is the largest banana producing and consuming region in Africa. Uganda is one of the world's second leading growers with a total annual production of about 10.5 million tonnes. It is Africa's biggest producer and consumer of bananas. Banana, it's by far the most important food security crop in Uganda. And uh, this can be confirmed by farmers and uh, uh, policy makers. But it is also an important cash crop. When you go to the countryside and ask farmers where they get most of their money from, they will tell you uh, in southern Uganda that banana is still number one crop that generates income for families. For the country, it's coffee which brings in most of the foreign currency. For the farmers, it's banana which brings in most of the money they use. So it's an important food and cash crop. However, most bananas in this region are now faced with the worst bacterial disease so far, known as banana xanthomonas wilt. It has been a devastating disease to many farmers, especially those farmers who are not knowledgeable, who nearest can get the disease and then they leave it to spray. It was a threat in my garden just for one time, but I managed to control it and now I don't have it. This disease was originally reported in Ethiopia about 45 years ago. Outside of Ethiopia, it was first identified in Uganda in 2001 and subsequently in the Democratic Republic of Congo, Rwanda, Kenya, Tanzania and Burundi. BXW is now widely spread in East Africa. It attacks almost all varieties of bananas, causing these countries an annual loss of over 500 million US dollars. Banana Zentomonas world is a very serious disease and actually it's the most serious disease in East and Central Africa currently for the uh, banana producer. And uh, according to the economists, the loss is estimated at about $2 billion over a decade. IITA and its partners have been using genetic transformation as a crop improvement tool to help produce more and better food staples. The Institute, with partners such as the National Agricultural Research Organization, NARO of Uganda, and the African Agricultural Technology Foundation, AATF in Kenya, is at the forefront of research designing a genetically modified banana that is resistant to the worst bacterial disease so far. This project aims at providing the farmers banana materials which will be resistant against this, uh, this disease for which right now we don't have any means of controlling the disease. So for the small scale farmers, it's very important that we provide them the seed or the plantlet or banana which can withstand this disease. The use of genetic engineering has transformed agriculture and agricultural food production and development by providing options and solutions where none existed before, to the benefit of billions of the world's inhabitants. As it is, we cannot uh, let out any genetically modified organisms because we don't have the regulations, we don't have the guidelines that are supposed to um, help us to take out this to the communities. And as you know, in the communities anything can happen. These guys can take up these plants, disorganize them, or they begin mixing them up. And of course they will come back and tell you that, look, what you gave us is not working. So we, we are a little bit careful, but we think that soon the regulations will be in place and we can work very quickly to make these plants because it's quite a very serious, very serious condition that leads to enormous losses to the farmers. Developing resistant varieties is a long-term but more sustainable way to control pests and diseases. Same technology seems best approach for banana plant's defense mechanism against BXW through genetic engineering because of its many advantages. If we can solve this problem and the resistant varieties goes into the hands of farmer, you can see how much they can benefit in terms of uh, saving the cost. To this effect, genes were acquired from Academia Sinica and over 300 transgenic plants 
expressing genes from sweet pepper, were generated from two popular cultivars of banana. And out of those, the best 65 resistant lines, selected from a large number of transgenic lines originally generated on the basis of enhanced resistance to BXW using potted plants in the greenhouse, were evaluated in a confined field trial at the National Agricultural Research Laboratories in Kawanda, Uganda, against BXW for three successive crop cycles. This is the non-transgenic control plants where we have not inserted any foreign gene into it and you can see the plant has completely wilted because of the disease. Uh, and this is the transgenic plant where we, this is the leaf inoculated and you can see the plant is still looks healthy and uh, there is no symptom of, of disease. We're quite happy with the results so far. We have seen quite a good level of resistance for some of the materials we are testing and we are hoping that the field trial will confirm uh, this resistance and maybe in the near future we will have some uh, resistant bananas to distribute to farmers. Eleven transgenic lines infused with wilt resistant genes had been shown to be absolutely resistant to BXW under confined field trials in Uganda. The transgenic plants did not show significant changes in morphology compared with non-transgenic plants. Most of the transgenic lines showed normal growth and fruit development, suggesting that insertion of disease-resistant gene in banana does not seem to alter plant physiology. Aside from these results, this project is keen on capacity building to ensure the sustainability of technologies such as this. This project has actually contributed quite a lot. You know, it's a collaboration with the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture and uh, the scientists of the institute have worked in close partnership uh, with us right from the start, from acquiring the genes and getting the licenses approved and the agreements and you know, getting the genes to the labs and training young technicians to do the transformation. So at all levels uh, of this project, a lot of capacity building has been achieved. This press is a good press. There are facilities here. It's uh, one of the presses in the East African region where the facilities, are, I should say, are, are the best in the region. Uh, the biotechnology laboratories, the tissue culture laboratories, I should say, the facilities are perfect. The project has opened up for me very many avenues to be able to learn how to transform transformation in general. That is coming up with the transgenic bananas, which is a key core activity for you to be able to generate GMOs. And uh, that I believe is going to be a very key in the future for the GM work. Mm -hmm.